Today we're going to talk about triangles and how I've used them in robotics to solve my problem. The issue is I have an object in 3D space and I want to reach out for it with a robotic arm. The robotic arm has three degrees of freedom, so it has an elbow, it has a shoulder, but the shoulder also rotates this way. So it doesn't just go up and down, it goes out this way as well. We have an object in 3D space, so we have it as X, Y and Z. X, Y and Z. If we break this down into three separate problems, first of all we kind of want to know what the angle down is, where are we reaching out to. Then we want to know how much to the side it's going, and then we want to know how to bend the arm to reach that object. So this is how I want to address this. So if we take the side view, so if you're looking onto a human and you look at their side view, you would have a shoulder joint and an arm. So this would be one angle and this would be another angle. If you take this into a triangle, if you know what the X, Y and Z of an item is, if you want to reach out for somewhere here, let's make this a coloured ball because then it won't get confused with X, you can draw a triangle. And as it's a right angle triangle, and you know that it goes out X, you know it goes down Y, you can work out what this angle here is, you can work out what this angle here is, and you can work out the hypotenuse. So, so this angle here is what we want to know, right? I'll allow you to work this out online. If you take the same problem and you take it looking down on top of somebody's head, you would have, I have a shoulder joint here and I'm trying to reach something here. You again have a triangle. And this time, this would be X and this would be Z. And you need that angle. So these two angles tell your arm how much to kind of go down and how much to go to the side. But you also get the hypotenuse, which with um, trigonometry, if you know the three sides of a triangle, you can work out its angle. So this is the bit that was the most powerful. So because we only have two degrees of freedom on, a, on our arm that can actually reach out, so the third deg um, degrees of freedom is actually just the rotation joint going sideways, you can then work out a triangle of where you want to reach. So this ends up being the hypotenuse of where you were working out either this triangle or this triangle. You know how long this is because this is how long your arm is. This is your forearm. So when you actually say, right, the item I want to reach is this distance away, then you know that this is, say, for instance, four, and this is four long. Actually, it looks a little bit shorter, but anyway. You can work out what that angle needs to be, which is your shoulder joint. You can work out what this el uh, angle needs to be, which is your elbow joint. You then take the angle you've added here, which makes it from a straight line to actually pointed to the right angle. So if you imagine this, so if, if I drew this again, you would have something like that, right? And this is level and this is your triangle. This is your SSS triangle. But then you need to know how far it goes down, which is the angle used here. So you would then, well, rotate it like we've done here. You then also rotate on the top view here to give you how much you sweep across for your item like that. And actually, it works. So to recap on this, if you use simple trigonometry of a right angle triangle to work out your kind of offsets of how far your arm is pointing down, how far your point, arm is pointing to the left or the right, which is here and here, you also have the hypotenuse because you know what the X and the Y is, so how far out you're reaching and how far down or to the side. You then feed that into what they call the SSS triangle, which can then give you the angles to bend the arm so that that length is equal. So, so you know this hypotenuse, you know these two lengths, you can then work out what you need to bend the arm so that it reaches that far. And then you basically rotate this down by what you worked out here and then across by what you worked out here. 
Now this may sound a bit like black magic. It's very simple trigonometry, uh, except maybe the SSS triangle. I don't remember learning that at school, to be honest. But it actually works. So my robotic arm, I put in all types of values and the arm moved to a very close approximate to where it should do. Obviously with gearing and each you know, cog has a little bit of give in each one. You know, it's out by a couple of, I think it was about out by about a little centimetre. But when you're moving what would be equivalent to 40 or 50 centimetres in three-dimensional plane, centimetre here or there out is pretty good. So, so I'm actually surprised this works. I know that kin kinematics and inverse kinematics does work by triangles. I don't know if it's anything to do with what I've been playing with, but it seems a very simple way of working out how technically a human arm should reach out for an item. There's a couple of got use when you've got like minus figures. So I had to start using absolute figures, absolute values, sorry, of an X, Y, and Z. And then if it was minus, then you just kind of move it up more. Like, um, so I explain it. So, so if it was a minus value, this would just go down more. Um, you need to remember where your center point of your arm is. So like we were saying here, we worked out this triangle, if that was your center, then you know you either got up or down. But on my shoulder joint, my center is straight down. And on my elbow joint, it's still straight down. Um, so as long as you know where you're starting from and you rotate them by the angles, the minus figure should be fine. Go more into that. So I'd like to know what everybody else thinks of this, um, especially anybody who knows anything about robotics, said I was really surprised this actually did work and I can show a demo in a minute about that. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you.